thank you for joining me on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Well, at least it's beautiful where I am. Hope it's beautiful where you are. A uh, video I've wanted to do for a while. Originally, I thought I'd just film this and then upload it, but then I had the great idea based on the feedback I've got from you guys about how much you've appreciated the live streams that uh, I should do this live with you. So here we are. We are live. I am going to go through my entire collection of CCM Brass 187 scale models. These are the, in my opinion, my humble opinion, the creme de la creme of uh, 187 scale construction pieces. And uh, if you collect models, particularly construction models, these are definitely some pieces that you will want to add to your collection. I have 29 of these in my collection, 29 different castings, which, as far as I can tell, uh, is all of them. Now, there are obviously some different color variations out there, such as the white ones and such, but these are basically all of the cat black and yellow ones. So, get your questions in as we do the live stream. If you guys have any comments, I will try to periodically keep up with chat as I go through this. So, let's not delay any longer. We will start with the original 12 brass set from CC CCM Models, which of course started everything as we know it today. So this is the Caterpillar 325L Excavator. Fantastic model. I'm sure you'll hear that a lot through this entire video because every, truth be told, every single one of these models is absolutely a work of art. A fantastic honor to own each of these. Uh, again, an amalgamation of probably two and a half decades worth of work uh, to get all of these. So uh, again... Highly would recommend any of these, but back to the excavator. This was number one out of the 12, the 325L excavator. As you can see, the tracks are not movable. Of course, you don't really want to move any of these too much. These are definitely display pieces. Um, and uh, again, all of these guys, I'm trying to look here and glance on the chat. All of these are closed edition models with the exception of the last one, the last model at the very end of this video, number 29. That is the only one you can get directly from CCM. So this is number one, the 325L Excavator. As you can see, we've let it spin around a few times. Let's move on now to number two. We have the D8R Bulldozer again. Tracks are stationary, but the blade does move. This comes with a tow hitch on the back. I really like the decision that they made to not add a ripper on this. Personally, I love the fact that it just has a tow hitch on the back of it. Let's get caught up on chat as you guys admire and look at this model here. Looks like we got a few people in the chat. Um, what time is it in my country? It is just past noon. Digger Man, what was the first CCM brass model you got? The first one that I got was the uh, coal planer that you're going to see here coming up very shortly. Mr. J says, hello, sir. Hello to all of you that are joining me for the live stream, so thank you very much. I think we are caught up on chat. Let's continue. Again, this is number two of the original 12, the D8R. These were made, for those of you that are not familiar towards the end of the, the the mid to the late 1990s. And you can see all of the detail that went into these. Even back then, with the visibility perforations on the blade, always was impressed by these. Next up, you want to talk about casting detail, especially that holds up even today. Number three is the 633E scraper, or specifically an elevating scraper. Again, nothing works on this. Uh, other than you can move the elevating mechanism slightly. Obviously, the rubber tires will work. Uh, but aside from that, again, these are static models. Do not move these if you add them to your collection. Display them behind glass, which is what I do. You can also see just how large this is when compared to the other ones when you put it on the display table. So much, much larger machine. This will start a trend. By the end of this video, you will see at least two other scrapers in 187 scale, but this is the only elevating scraper. So that's number three, trying to keep the pace and tempo of this up because we got a lot to get through. Number four, we have the CAT CB634C roller or double drum vibratory compactor as Caterpillar likes to call it. This was a must for me. This was, I think, the second or third out of this set that I bought. Um, I wasn't able to get this set, obviously, as they were coming out in real time back in the 90s. Um, I was 
well, when this started, I was five years old in 1995. So obviously this was a little bit more than I could afford as a five-year-old. So I had to get these piece by piece as an adult. Um, so I think the cold planer was the first one I got. The roller was the second I got. And as many of you guys, long-term viewers of the channel may guess, the paver was naturally the third choice for the first three that I got. All right. Catching up on chat. Uh, looks like I didn't miss anything. CCM, I believe, started in the late 1980s, to answer Lucas's question. Could be wrong on that. I know that the first CCM, or the first cat models that CCM did, uh, to my knowledge, was the original 12 that you're seeing right now. All right, let's keep going. Number, what are you on, number five? Number five, the 140H motor grader. To date, and this is a trend in their 148 scale models as well, because there's currently only one available in 148 scale. Uh, this is the only 187 scale motor grader, so CCM is not very big on producing motor graders. So this is the only one you can get in HO scale by them, or 187 scale, same thing. It is pretty functional. You can turn the blade, you can position it. Uh, the actual mirrors, check this out, they fold in and fold out. So if you had this on a low boy, they even went as far as to cast the mirrors being able to fold in and out for transport. Again, little details, no matter the model manufacturer, no matter the model, no matter the scale, is something that I have always appreciated uh, and kind of something that I would, if I was a model maker and if I had the money and if I was dealing with tooling and castings, that's something I would obsess about is getting the small details right. All right, let's move on. Number six, we have the IT20HE Integrated Tool Carrier. It's important to keep in context when this set came out. Uh, again, if you're just joining us, welcome. But we're talking about mid-1990s to late-1990s. And the Integrated Tool Carrier concept with their wheel loaders was really going strong right about then. Um, the quick attachment, the, the forks, and the integrated tool carrier arm and the bucket. So the IT28s, the the IT30s, everything else that they had, uh, really, really popular, really high selling machines back then. So they obviously this was a natural fit to include this into the 12 piece set. You do have some pretty decent functionality on here. I'm going to be very careful. Uh, bucket tilts a little bit forward, but it does curl back more than it tilts. And obviously you do have a fair range of articulation. Let's get caught up on chat. Where are we here? Uh, Lewis, hello. I love watching your videos, especially diecast and more. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for tuning into the live stream as well. Has CCM ever made a 187 diecast model? They have not. They have not made a diecast 187 scale model to date. All right, let's keep going. What are we on? Number seven. This number seven is a good one. It's a very good one. Here it is. I'm going to let you see it before I say it. It's the Cat PM465 Cold Planer. This was the first that I got. And this was one of the cases where I I goofed up, if you will. That's, that's saying it lightly. I paid way too much money for this thing, and I will fully admit that. But I didn't care what this cost. Once I saw that it was available, I was going to move heaven and earth to get one. Um, so I did. And I kind of regret paying as much as I did for it, but... It is what it is. Um, I don't regret having it in the collection. Any opportunity I have to display this model, whether it be pictures or going to shows or doing whatever, or product demonstrations, whatever, I will pull this out. It just looks absolutely amazing to me. The tracks can be moved. You can slightly adjust the uh, conveyor. Again, I would not totally recommend that. And there's even some underside of the conveyor components that are adjustable as well. But the coal planer, number seven, by far my favorite in the entire CCM 12-piece set. So, absolutely. All right, let's get caught up on scale. Uh, or caught, caught up on scale. I read one of the comments. Let's get caught up on the comments here. It says... Hold on, my stand's freaking out here. Give me a minute. That's what happens when we do these live. Live chat. Christopher says he's watching from the Philippines. That's awesome. Hello, Philippines. And Christopher, thank you for watching. 
Uh, CCM. Uh, HO scale. CCM did not start in the 1980s. It started producing in 1957. Okay, that's news to me. I will have to get off this video and figure that out. Um, so thank you, Lucas, if that is correct, but I, I think that's a little bit early. Uh, what is my preferred scale? Honestly, I started out collecting 150 scale, but probably within the past five years, that trend has turned significantly. I still love 150 scale, but I prefer collecting um, construction equipment in a smaller scale, 187 scale. Um, Joseph, what is the model of the fire dozer and does... What is the model of the fire dozer and does cat make a 164 scale version of it what is the model are you talking about the upcoming fire dozer so the fire dozer that's coming out is going to be in 150 scale um, by diecast masters and as far as i know there are no plans to release that in 164 scale yet but it will be available in 150 scale okay eric i really love your caterpillar models and you should get the new d11 with the two blade and rippers eric i have that model um Actually, I believe that was in one of the live streams, if I'm not mistaken. Tune into, I think, the second to last live stream. Um, you get a preview of that. I am going to do that uh, that review very soon. Uh, no, the fire dozer in your HO scale collection. Okay, that's an international harvest uh, harvester model. That is HO scale. It's made by First Gear. So, yes, there's two fire dozers available from International Harvester and First Gear. There's a smaller one, which I think is a TD-15 and a TD-25, but they're, they are not CAT. They're International Harvester. So, yeah, check those out. All right, let's get back on topic here because we're only on number 7 of 29, so we got a lot to go here. Uh, going back to the PM-465, again, fantastic model, one that I would recommend anyone pick up. And uh, it's just it's just amazing looking. I hope that the small details are coming across. I know that it's not the most ideal setup when we do these live videos, uh, but it kind of is what it is at this point. Uh, by the way, I hope you guys have noticed, but I've changed up my lighting a little bit. So hopefully it's a little bit brighter and crisper than some of the other videos have been lately. So let me know if you've been noticing a difference at all. All right, let's go to number eight. Number eight is the D250E articulated dump truck. Now, technically, this is a Series 2 version of the D250E, so the front is a little bit different. The dump box is a little bit different. Um, but obviously, you had to have an articulated dump truck in the 12-piece set. So here you go. It does articulate, and you can dump the dump box. So that is the D250E. You will see coming up here very shortly that there was a variation of this made in very small quantities by a company called Zyklon Models. And uh, again, just a little bit of a teaser or a preview of things to come. You will see that very shortly, so stay tuned. Let's continue on with the original 12. You've seen eight so far. Let's get to number nine. This is the... 953C track loader. So here it is, 953C track loader. I do like the fact that this just has the counterweight on the back. I'm really happy they didn't put a ripper or a winch on this, at least where I live. And maybe you guys, you know, you guys can say otherwise. I'm interested to see what you see the rest, of the rest of the world, the rest of the country. But you really see these track loaders, especially these this era, the late 90s. Uh, with just the, the counterweight on the back. You don't see a winch, you don't see a ripper, any of that. This is the standard version that you see. Uh, also important to note, when you buy one of these, don't think that there's been an issue with it, like specifically that they left the glass out or the glass has been removed. That's in fact just how it came. So there are there's no simulated glass inside the cab. That's just the way that it was casted. So that's the 953C. Back to live chat for just a minute. Looks like there's still some debate going on over the official launch of CCM. So how about we table that for now, guys? And uh, when the video is over, I will do some research and I will figure out exactly when CCM started making their first models. I think 50, 1950s is a little bit early from anything that I've ever heard of. Um, so why don't we table that discussion? 
And once the video is over, I will either update it in the comment section of this video and uh, we'll get some facts straight as to when they uh, they first started. I know that they made models for other companies before CAT, that I know. And I know that the Brass 12 piece set was the first that they did for CAT, and that was in the mid-1990s. All right. Joseph says, uh, I got my decal tools prepped, and I have the name for my future squad truck. Also got my engine and battalion ready. That's awesome. I can't wait. I know you've been working on that and looking forward to it, so I can't wait to see the finished product. Uh, Lucas is still making his own thing, making his own statements up. Uh, CCM stands for classic construction models, not capability, whatever you said. Uh, BC Diggerman, yes, I've had um, models before with zinc rot issues. One, two of my Hitachi 870s had zinc rot issues. Luckily, I was able to get those replaced. All right. Looks like we are on track. So that was number nine. Number 10 is the aforementioned paver, which for a while, and even now, if you discount the 3D printed options available from various designers on Shapeways, this is the only 187 scale cat paver that is in the market. Kind of, uh, kind of crazy to think that, you know, it's been 20 some odd years and for whatever reason, the various different die-cast companies with a Caterpillar license have not made a newer 187 scale die-cast uh, cat paver. Really, it's quite shocking. Yes, it's a very specialized piece of equipment, and of course, it may not sell to the masses as well as you know your, your dozers, your excavators, your loaders, but there's still certainly a market for it. And I think nowadays, with specialized equipment being more prevalent and... Uh, be, quite honestly, being desired from um, collectors and model railroaders for their for their layouts, I think if these specifically diecast masters would do a diecast one in one eighty seven scale, I think it would be very well received, just like their model railroad excavator was very well received. Uh, ben asks, "When is the two thousand twenty one fire department fleet video coming?" I can do that shortly. I don't know when but there's not that many new additions to it. I was hoping to have the tower ladder done by the end of this year, but that's not going to happen. So I can do a collection update video, but there's probably not going to be that much new things that you guys haven't seen before. Um, Joseph, I just got to put the name of my fire station over the driveway, and then I'll focus on the rings. Hope you like the final result. Oh, I'm sure I will. Okay, down to the last two in the 12-piece set. we got to pick the pace up here, guys. Uh, this is the 992G wheel loader, starting to get into the two biggest models. Here we go. So there's the 992G. So at the, at the time that this came out, this was the second largest loader option that Caterpillar had. And it was such a hit that, of course, CCM modelers wanted a 187 scale model of the biggest one that CCM offers. And uh, that you will be seeing shortly as well. Hello, Jones. Thanks for joining us. Uh, modeling takes a long time to do. Yes. Uh, Digger man. No, I'm not going to be showing in one, any 148 scale models in this video. This is a very specialized video focusing on the 187 scale stuff. All right. Number 12 of 12. In the 12 piece original set, the triple 7D off highway truck or dump truck. This was never really one of my favorites. I mean, it does dump, it does everything you'd want it to do. I even like the fact that it has the little mini. Can you see this back here, guys? It even has the little mini rock deflectors, which are functional between the two rear tires on the rear axle. Um, I don't know what it is about the 77D, the D model specifically, but it's just, it's nowhere, it, it just wasn't appealing to me. However, now that we are done with the original 12 models in the classic construction model set, let's go now to three models that a company out of Texas called Zyklon Models, which is owned by Dan Goins, a great guy, very popular and prominent in the HO or 187 scale community. He took three of these, three of these models, and made variations of them. So I'm going to show you those now. 
Let's take a look at the two triple seven variations first. First one we have is the triple seven D with a Klein or clean K eighteen hundred water tank on it. Again, these Zyklon models slash CCM collaboration models were made in extremely small quantities, and they are very difficult to get your hands on. Uh, in fact, this one, this water truck, uh, didn't even come in a standard uh, box. In fact, I talked to Dan about a year ago when I was able to get this up, and uh, I spoke with him specifically, and this truck just came in a white box. There was no CCM branding or anything. And in fact, that's the box that this was shipped to me in. Uh, interesting that this had no commercial packaging on it. So again, just a tip for you guys that may want to go out or see these, and you see one of these pop up and there's no uh, commercial CCM packaging or any of that, this one, this specific version, did not have any of it. Okay, Let's get caught up on a couple questions. Looks like there's one here in the chat. What is the hardest to find of the CCM brass models in my, in my experience? Okay, so at the time when I was hunting all these down, or the first time that I was hunting all these down, I won't get into why it took me twice. Um, the first time is, well, it's kind of a tie. I'd say the 992G and the... Believe it or not, the 633E. I'd say those two were a pretty consistent um, tie for being the two most difficult ones to find. In fact, both of those I had to buy out of the country. One of them, I think, came from Germany. And I think the other one came from a guy in Russia. Something like that. All right. Here's the last of the 777 twins. This is a 777 with a... Uh, clean or Klein, depending on your pronunciation. Uh, fuel and lube body. This is extremely impressive. Unlike the water tank, this did come in your traditional CCM brass packaging. Uh, I believe this did have an, a COA, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. And they also did this in mining white as well. Very impressive piece. You can see all the handrails. You can see the diesel fuel tank here. Gear oil, waste oil. I mean, there's just... You even have your little wheel chocks here at the front. There's tons of detail all throughout. By far, one of my most favorite, especially when we get into the mining uh, size stuff. Okay. Last of our Zyklon models, customs, or variations, whatever terminology you want to use, is our... Water tanker, which is based on the D250E chassis. Here it is. And again, this is all brass. It's not as though he took these trucks' chassis, if you will, and then built a die cast or resin tank on these. No, these are all brass components. Um, these, and I actually have the box right here, so bear with me just a minute. So these came in the same style D250E articulated dump truck box. The only way to tell, here we go, hopefully that will focus, Zyklon Models, Dan Goins, authorized conversion, uh, your Klein 5,000-gallon water tank, number one of 100. Uh, these were done in August of 2001. Okay. All right, next. We're going huge. As in the largest HO scale cat brass model done to date. And that is, as you may have guessed, the original 797. This one is another one that CCM did in, obviously, OEM, cap black and yellow. But they've also done a mining white version of this. I am not interested and really have no interest, furthermore, or going for, forward in collecting any of the white variations, basically because they're harder to find. Um, and, you know, each of them basically now go for over $1,000. 
So I'm happy to just have the entire collection in cat black and yellow. So really, I, I have no desire to chase down any of the white ones. There's far too many other things on my wish list to get than to deal with that. So that is the 797. All right. Marcio, am I pronouncing that right? He says he's watching from Brazil. Hello, Brazil. And hello, Marcio. Thank you for watching. Ben says the thing's impressive. Yes. Uh, Lucas, if you want to have a huge collection, get a three-bedroom house and use two bedrooms for your collection. Uh, actually, my... <laughs> funny you bring that up. Uh, my residence is... I have the model room down here in my basement, which is a finished basement. And this is also where I do all my reviews. Basically, the only thing on this level that is not modeled, whether it's storage or model display cases or whatever, is I have a couch down here with a TV mounted on the wall, so when I have some friends over or whatnot, we can come down here and watch game day, have some beers or whatever. And then I have a laundry room. Basically, everything else on this level uh, is models. Going upstairs to the main level, obviously I don't have anything really model-related on the main level. I'm thinking about changing that. I'm thinking about actually getting one of those cheap display cases from Ikea and just having a small one. Uh, heading upstairs where my home office is, because I my day job, I work out of the house pretty much five days a week. I may go into my office once or twice, but with the ongoing situation in the world, it's been great, honestly, to uh, not... That was poor phrasing. The ongoing world situation hasn't been great, but it's it's been good in the way that I get to work from home. So I have a room that I've converted to my home office. That has some models in it. Um, and then I have my bedroom, which I have my 148 scale CCM models in two display cases up there. So to answer your question, is my residence full of models? Yes. And that's an understatement. All right. Um... Abdullah says, is this a live auction? No, it's not a live auction, but thank you for tuning in. This is showcasing my CCM collection. I hope you stay by and watch some of the greatest models that have ever been produced. Joseph says, quick question on the HO diecast fleet. What is your opinion on the heavy duty HO Quint truck? Are you talking about the Spartan one that Walther's made or the cheapo one from Del Prado or whatever it's called? Both of them are decent. They're affordable. If you're looking for a Quint, I would recommend either one of them. Um, the Del Prado one, the ladder doesn't work, though. It's just a static model. So if you want a vehicle that the ladder actually moves up and down, get the Walther Seatmaster one. Let's get back to CCM stuff. We are on number 16 in the collection. We have to go to all the way 29, and we are on, and we are already 30 minutes into this video. So we're doing decent with time. I appreciate all you guys tuning in. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Hope you have enjoyed interacting with me and maybe learning something. That is the whole point of doing these live videos. All right. I alluded to this, presented you guys with a little bit of a teaser earlier on. Here's the 994D. So this is the 994D wheel loader with showroom sparkly wheels. Um, yeah, this thing is incredibly impressive. Two versions of this were made by CCM. This is, has the standard bucket on it. They also did a cat black and yellow with a, I believe it's a coal bucket on it. And then this was done in mining white as well. So three, technically three versions, but two versions in cat black and yellow. Um, I have not seen any of the coal, ver the coal bucket versions in yellow for a long, long, long time. So I guess those somehow have gotten really rare. Uh, but this one's good enough for me. Check out the hand railing detail, your exhaust, your air cleaners, your mirrors. I mean, these, I can't express this enough, especially to you guys. I try to bring these as close as I can. Um, you can see the hydraulic lines. These models are obsessively detailed. It's crazy. It's like they took the, the spec brochure drawings and all of these, and they laser scanned it to use today's technology. Um, and it essentially pooped out this mod. I mean, it, they're, they're insane. They are crazy detailed. Um, yes, they, they cost a small fortune, but man, there is no substitute when it comes to construction models than having a CCM brass piece in your collection. Um, they are worth it. I know that there are some individuals in the community, not necessarily in the community, but resellers in particular, 
um, that are strictly in this for the money that drive up the market of these, which, which is unfortunate. Um, at some point it is going to become too expensive for everybody, but all I can say is I hope that CCM at some point releases some new brass CCM models because we haven't seen any in 187 scale since 2017. So going on five years. But man, these things are just, they're insane. All right, let's get to some large dozers, shall we? First one is your standard Cat D11R. All right, so this can get confusing very quickly. The D11R standard dozer was done in this variation, which is obviously your your main or primary paint scheme. Then it was done in an anti-glare finish, which means the top portion of the cab is black and the blade is black. And then it was done in a mining white version. So there's three variations right there. Then, dun, 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 they released a carry dozer version. Same thing. This is the anti-glare version, but they also made an all yellow version and then a all mining white version. So, if you're counting, even I can do this math, which is amazing, um, that's six D11Rs in 187 scale that CCM did. And uh, you can occasionally, at least recently, there's there's been several of these that have popped up on eBay. And in fact, if you go to eBay and type in CCM D11R 187 scale and you select the filter for sold, uh, you can see that there's been a few that have sold recently for very, very reasonable prices, including a couple that actually sold for under retail. Now, whether or not those sales actually went through or whether the seller, you know, canceled the orders because he didn't get what he was wanting, which is, you know, everybody's arm and a leg. Um, but my point in saying that is these are still out there. They're available. You just have to put in the legwork to constantly, you know, check online and Use your sources to figure out where these are coming. All right, while these are making the rounds and uh, going in circles, let's get caught up on questions here. Uh, Faye says, cool collection. Thank you, Faye. Thanks for watching. Um, ben, I know I know what you start of in the HO files. What do we start of with looking at? Ben, please restate that. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. I saw at the local cat dealer, the original 12, but they were weathered at the original time they came out they were in a dial interesting they looked cool but seemed stupid to do i mean to each their own i personally that's a great point actually to bring up to each to each their own i'm not a huge proponent of weathering myself uh in fact i don't ever um weather any of my models i think i tried it out on like some matchbox cars once or maybe uh, maybe like the small cat models that Toy State came out with a handful of years ago that were like $5. But even that, I was like, oh, I'm super nervous about screwing anything up. So to each of their own, there are some very talented people out in the community that are expert at weathering models and, you know, giving them the effect that they've been in a pit and dirty. But me personally, you will never find me weathering up CCM models or, or really any high dollar models. But again, to each their own. It's your stuff. You do with it whatever you'd like to do with it. All right, Joseph. Oh, I just remembered. Where did you purchase the fireboat with the Walther's International 4900 steak truck? Uh, that fireboat was purchased on eBay. So look, check out eBay to find that. All right, let's keep going. So these are the two D11Rs. Carry dozer, standard. Anti-glare finish, standard finish. All right, sticking with the theme of track type tractors, not to be outdone, although in size, not in scale, in size, important to differentiate the two terms. This is a much smaller machine, but the detail and functionality is, is jam packed into this 583R pipe layer. Again, these were, if you're just joining us, these are all CCM 187 scale models that were released post the original 12 set so these were all individual releases that came out afterwards this has a ton of functionality including your counterweight which can be extended your boom which can go up and down 
if you are very careful, you can make the threads and uh, the, the crane portion of it go down. But again, I am so worried about threads jumping the reels and everything that I don't mess with my models too much at all. All right, Ben has come back in with a question. What do we start? Oh, he's just retracted his message, so that's okay. Uh, Lucas, it's very rare to get those original models now. Yes, it's very rare. Okay, uh, Joseph says, thanks, man. Got to get my sign ready for my station, but thanks again. We'll definitely send you a picture when I just have my mark. All right, sounds great, man. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a good rest of your day. So this is the 583R pipe layer. Uh, again, fantastic-looking models. All right, Ben has corrected his question. What do we start off looking at the HO files? <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you want to watch the HO files um, from the start. So the HO files are um, in a playlist on my channel, and they are. I have organized those in the order in which they came out. So I believe the first one I did was the power plant, which has all the yellow trucks out in front of it. But they they should be organized in you know part one, part two, whatever. Uh, there is a playlist on this channel called the HO files. All you have to do is click that out. Okay, Usar Knight says, do you think CCM will bring out modern versions of the D11 and 148 diecast? Would go well with their 6020 and upcoming 60. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what CCM's plans are uh, long term anyway. I know what their immediate plans are. And as far as their immediate plans, no, I don't see them bringing out the new D11 and 148 scale. But I would agree with you. I definitely would think that it would be advantageous for them to bring those out. Um... You saw, if you're not familiar, Diecast Masters has modern versions of the D11R, or excuse me, the D11 and 150th scale. That would be just fine. Honestly, those D11 dozers are, can be argued that they are CCM quality pieces uh, with functionality and detail. So I would definitely look into those. Uh, BC Diggerman, didn't they make a set with the pipe layers? They did. They made a set of three of the pipe layers mounted on a base with a pipe. Uh, Melissa says... Hello, Melissa. She says, show all your toys in a video, and when are you going to do a first gear video? There's plenty of first gear videos on this channel, including a recent one. Uh, and as I've stated many, many, many times before, these are not toys. These are adult collectibles, and it is impossible for me to show upwards of 20,000 models uh, in a single video. It is just not possible to do that. Uh, you're sorry. You're welcome for the reply. Thank you for watching. Uh, the dropout says he's tuning in for his first live stream. Well, welcome. Hope you stick around. We are in the middle of going through the collection of CCM Brass 187 scale pieces. Currently, we are on number 20 of 29. So, again, we got to pick up the pace here. I want to keep this under an hour if possible. So, let's move on. Number 21 is an 854G wheel loader. Another model that CCM has offered collectors in the standard cat black and yellow livery as well as a mining white livery. There's the model. Admire it in all its glory. The chat is blowing up, so let me get caught up on some of the questions here. Uh, you saw my issue with Diecast Masters is their use of decals for graphics instead of tampos like CC. Well, some of their... I, I understand what you're saying. I completely understand what you're saying, but again, the newer models... I would highly recommend you check out because they have stopped doing that. They have changed their um, their 180, their at least their 150 scale stuff. They have changed the way that they have applied the decals. All right, um, Melissa says I'm liked and subscribing, biggest fan. Thank you, uh, Ben R. We start off looking at the vehicles on each diorama on the HO files. Cool. I'm glad. That's why I do the HO files. Um, especially prominent is the metal mesh CCM have on the engine uh, versus decals with CCM or with D with diecast masters. Yes, although again, some of the new diecast masters stuff, particularly, I'd say anything that diecast masters has done within the past year and a half, their quality has improved immensely uh, with see through mesh and the uh, the technique that they do to apply decals. Again, especially on the 150th scale stuff. So I would I would implore you to check those out and see what you think of those. Okay, let's continue with this. So this is the, as I said before, this is the 854G wheel loader. A very large machine, in fact. Two versions of this were available, black and yellow and white. 
Um, good looking model. The functionality is that this machine can articulate across the pivot joint, much like a wheel loader, and also the blade can be raised and lowered and tilt forward slightly. This is another one that can be found pretty easily today. It, it's honestly surprising just how easy it is to find one of these. That's not to say that um, you're not going to pay for one of these, but I'm saying if you want one of these, it's very easy to find one compared to some of the other CCM pieces that we have seen. All right. Next up, we have the longest model offered. And I will say, going back to the question, which one was the hardest to find, I would put this right up there as well. This is the 776 tractor with mega bottom dump trailer. For whatever reason, this was another one that was very difficult to find because uh, of the length of this kind of worried this might roll off the table here anyway um so you have a, a cat 776 tractor mounted with the mega corporation bottom dump trailer functionality obviously is you have an articulating vehicle and then your bottom dump trailer does open so these would be typically used in mining specifically coal industry uh, where you can dump out through the bottom a very impressive rig lots and lots of details and it can be argued that once again even though it's marketed as a 776 this could be a variation of the uh the triple sevens as well okay um let's see here i'm still thinking about getting a model mining excavator should i should or not for the well I, it's up to you man if you want to get one obviously get one if not don't get one uh, BC Digger Man decals I thought meant stickers, like an older Ertl model. Yeah, uh, when I talk about decals, there's varying degrees of decal. You have pad printing decals, you have water slide decals, and then you have what I refer to as how do I explain this? High end decal application, which have that almost like flash application on it that look like it's been applied seamlessly. And in my opinion, most of the newer Diecast Masters 150th scale stuff, they have that seamless application finish to it. Now, some of their new 187th scale stuff, completely opposite. In fact, their 336 excavator and their, what is it, the D11, uh, some of those are literal sticker decal applications, which are not very appealing and are not very good looking. But in terms of the 794, which is an electric drive mining truck, the new D11s, um, and some of the other larger stuff that they've done, their decals quality is right on par with CCM, in my humble opinion. But you guys can pick them up. You guys can look at them and make that decision for yourself. All right, so let's get rid of the 776 and move on. Next one I want to put up is really something that can be argued as to whether it deserves a spot in this collection or not. And the reason I say that is because this is a model of the taboo term, quote unquote, toy. This is a D7 with a toad ripper. And this is actually a model of a, uh, of, of a toy from back in the day. Now it does come with a little clip that you can put in to the draw bar to securely attach the toad ripper trailer to the ripper. Of course, I'm not putting that on for just this quick display purpose. But this does not have the same level of detail as the other brass pieces do. However, it is a CCM 187 scale brass piece. Now, what I like the most about this is if you can see this little lever here, little joystick, if I carefully, without my hand in the way, if I carefully pull back on this, it raises the blade up. So very cool there. Again, based on a... Um, old cat toy from the day and here's the ripper as well which reads caterpillar caterpillar something or another the font the font is way too small for me to be able to read it and uh, the box is different too so i'll show you this so here is the the box where it says ho model toy number 63 cat d Let's not do it upside down. Cat D7. Um, and it's like a, it's, it's a slide-out style packaging where you can see copyright 2004 cat licensed merchandise. 
So it can be argued among most serious and respected collectors whether this deserves a spot in this collection. I think it does. So since this is my video, my channel, I'm putting it in this collection. All right, let's keep going here. We're at the 45 minute mark. Kind of getting a little nervous on time. Really appreciate all you guys that have stood in for uh, this whole video. It looks like we got close to 20 people in on this live stream right now, which is really impressive. Again, really appreciate all you guys joining me here on this Sunday afternoon. All right, so that was the D7 with Toad Ripper. You guys ready to get into some big stuff again? Seems like that seems to be uh, the stuff you guys like the most. All right, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. We have the 5230 backhoe configuration. So, as you'll see in a minute, this is one of two variations or two versions of the 5230 that CCM released. Um, fantastic model, again, good range of functionality, very, very high range of details. You can see the see through venting here for all the fans, hydraulic line detail. If I drop this down carefully, you can see all the access stair detail, your fire suppression system, uh, just an obsessive range of detail packed into the small machine. Now, what I'm really interested to see is when Diecast Masters new mining shovels get here, whenever that may be, with the, the shipping kerfuffle, if you will, um, I'm really interested to see how those are going to shape up to these see what little detail they are i obviously think it's going to be unrealistic to compare apples to apples that being said these were made about 10 years ago and obviously the new diecast master shovels are being made this year so it would be nice to see a straight up comparison especially since these cost now you're lucky to get one of these for under 1500 to 2000 dollars. so we'll see how that goes okay uh, looks like we're caught up on questions for the most part, other than uh, there's a new person in the stream. Uh, Railhawk Racer 19 says, hi, hello. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the dropout is leaving the stream, but he says if this is up later, he will watch it. Of course, this is going to be up later. And thank you for joining us. Really appreciate you watching it. And, uh, all right, let's get into the second 5230. So this is the backhoe configuration or excavator configuration. I never really knew why they called them backhoes because to me, a backhoe is a rubber tired machine. That, this to me would be more of an excavator, but you know, cat has their ways. So they technically referred that as a backhoe configuration of the two. This is my favorite. This is the 5230 front shovel configuration. Once again, extremely functional. Everything works, rotates 360 degrees. You can move the tracks. Um, you can move the, the arm, everything. There you go. You can open the bucket. They've even gone as far as to include a razor-sharp, very small two-scale antenna on the back of both of these machines' cabs. These look great loading the uh, the 797, even though that's perhaps maybe a larger or, or too large of a truck to be matched with a shovel of this size. But, again, in a diorama or on an HO scale layout, they do look very good posed together. So that's number 24 and 25. We have four more to go. Now we're going to get into the most recent four releases. So number 26 and 27 are variations unto themselves so this is the primary version this is a 657 g wheel tractor scraper offered in two versions um and let me rephrase that offered in several different versions but specifically the 657 g this version was offered by itself and also as a push pull set so the push pull set came with two of these wherein you can mimic cat's technique of push pull with two scrapers now the 657 itself was offered as a 657 push-pull configuration, this version, a push-pull configuration set, two of these, uh, a mining white version, and then 
number 27 in our collection is a 657G coal bowl scraper. So there you go. I believe this is the first time on camera you guys have seen the 657G coal scraper. That is a new addition this year to the collection. One of two new additions this year to the collection. Um, it's Again, it was one of those variations where I was happy with just the standard 657. I had zero goal or intention to add the coal version. Uh, however, an opportunity presented itself that I just couldn't turn away. So I now have both of them. Long story short. You can see just how large the scraper, or, or I'm, I'm sorry, the, the coal version scraper is to the standard 657. So there you go. Returning to chat here momentarily. Uh, Railhawker19, do I have an HO layout? I have everything to have an HO scale rail route, railroad layout with the exception of actually laying it out. So I do occasionally bring out a small table and throw up a layout. The only thing that's, pre that's preventing me from having a full-time layout is space. So at some point here, sooner rather than later, uh, I would like to upgrade. And once I upgrade, pretty much the first thing I'm going to do is have a train room that is exclusively dedicated to having the layout uh, out 24-7. But in the meantime, I just have the ability to bring it out temporarily, but it is not permanently set up. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, Douglas, in the Great White North, or at least in my part of it, excavators are referred to as track hose. Yes, that's another thing I've heard them refer to. I just, again, to me, I've, I've grown up in the North, and then the majority of my life I've now spent here in the Midwest, and I've, I've Back hose to me are rubber tired machines with a bucket at the end, or at the front, and then a backhoe at the rear. So that's, I refer to excavators as excavators, the tracked machines. Reptilius, excluding brands like Matchbox and Hot Wheels, what brand do you think you have the most models of? Hmm. Uh, probably, it's close, but probably still Norscott. Northscott and Diecast Masters are close. Uh, Lucas says the only building you need is the sawmill kit. Okay, I'll add that to my list. Maybe I'll get it one day. Not not in a super big hurry to add any HO scale kits at the moment. All right, we're down to the last two. So you've seen the two scrapers. How are we doing on time? We're almost at 53 minutes, so we're doing okay. This is the other new addition as of this year. Actually, I think the triple seven might have been. No, I got the I got the seven seven six last year. So yeah, this would have been twenty twenty. I don't know about you guys, but twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one have just kind of meshed together to form one never ending year for me. Hard to keep things straight. Here it is on screen diecast emporium debut for me of the seven eighty nine D. This was a gift to me, um, really symbolic in the fact that it marked the end of the hunt to obtain one of each of the 187 scale uh, brass CCM castings. So very happy to have this in the collection. Again, another truck that's offered in cat black and yellow, as you see, and then also in mining white. So this would be a more appropriate truck to pair with the, uh, the, the 5230 shovels in my opinion. Although, again, age-wise, the 5230 shovels are probably 10 years older than this truck. But that's not to say you wouldn't see the, this, these two working together at the same time. Just an important note to point that out. All right, let's get the last model out. To conclude, the CCM Brass 187 scale collection this is, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, the only model you can still get direct from CCM at MSRP. And I think this will be a favorite to most people. It is the 349FL Excavator. Only offered, surprisingly, in uh, one configuration. Now, I've talked to CCM, and this has been out since 2017. And I've, uh, I I've had discussions with them about potentially 
offering this in different configurations just to get rid of the stock and move it along. Like doing an impact hammer or a sword and grapple, you know, with protection over the cab. Uh, they seem to not be particularly keen on that idea. So, reason for telling you that is if you are interested in picking up one of these 349 FLs, there are still plenty in stock at CCM. Uh, you can visit their website, ccmmodels.com. Go and click on the Available Models tab under CAT, and you can find this model. I believe it, it's around $750, something like that. Again, not an insurmountable amount of money, um, but again, all of these pieces are extremely, extremely expensive, but you are getting the very best of the very best uh, in construction in 187 scale. So that concludes it, guys. That's my entire collection. You've seen everything, all 29 models in 187 scale by CCM. Let's spend the next five or so minutes answering some questions, and then we will end the video. So I really appreciate you guys joining me. Uh, it looks like at one point over here in the right side screen, we, we had over 21 people watching this at any one time, which is amazing for me. So thank you all so very much. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, looks like we still have about 14 people in here as of now. So we'll spend the next three and a half minutes answering some other questions that you guys may have. Again, anything diecast related, and then we will end the video. So get your questions in right now. Uh, Lucas says he's going to head out. Well, thank you for joining us for the video. Really appreciate it. Uh, I want to make sure I'm going over the chat and I didn't miss anything. I'm waiting for your guys' questions to come in. So did you guys have a favorite of any of these? Like which of these 29s would, or which of these 29 models would definitely be your favorite? Uh, let's see, did I miss anything? Do, do, do. I don't think I missed anything. Uh, Parker is just tuning in now. Uh, he says he missed the whole video. Yep. We're in the last couple minutes here. People are getting their last questions in before I sign out. We've been on here for over an hour, or almost an hour, I should say. So just giving people their last opportunity to ask the questions before we end the video. Woo. Zoomed in a little too far there. So once again, guys, thank you very much for tuning into this. Um, obviously, a lot of time went into making this video and getting this all set up, so I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, thank you all for your your time and uh, watching this and having your questions always makes this video, these live videos, that much better when we have people in here actually um contributing to the video and asking questions. So it looks like there's not going to be anything else that needs to be said here on chat. So I think we're just going to sign off right now. So thank you guys once again for joining me for this live edition of Diecast Emporium. Really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you take a look at your screen right now. You will find another suggested link for another Diecast Emporium review. Until next time, guys, take care, be safe, and I will see you in the next review.